Yo, 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 what up, though, man? Hip-hop, hip-hop pioneer, man. Legendary trailblazer. Man, I don't know where hip-hop would be without your hands touching it. Man, founder, co-founder, founder of The Source Magazine, The Hip-Hop Bible, Dave Mays in the building. What up, man? What's going on? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Appreciate the, the love. Hey, no problem, man. I appreciate you, man, contributing um, to the culture. Uh, making my hip hop experience even grand because I'm 37, so I ca I caught the source. I remember my, my brother like eight years older than me, uh -huh. and I remember him going, and it was like you had to see the mics. Yeah. Though you know what I'm saying, yeah. like our basement was covered with nothing but source. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, covers and clippings out in the magazine. Man, you definitely contributed to the culture. Um, but right now, man, you you working on a new platform. So kind of tell us about what you what you got going on right now. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so I just uh, launched a platform for the hip hop community that's called Breakbeat. Okay. It's a network uh, for the hip hop audience. Um, the first uh, phase of it is a podcast network. We've got right now uh, eight different podcasts in production. Uh, we'll be adding more over the next you know months to come. Um, and we're doing all types of podcasts. So we have uh, some that are, you know, visual uh, discussion format, talk format, interview format type podcasts. Um, but we're also doing a lot uh, of audio uh, produced kind of journalistic style podcasts. That's gotcha. really a, a big part of podcasting that, you know, the hip hop world hasn't even touched really at all. There's been very, very little done, but it's huge in, in the podcasting business. Um, so, yeah, I just I, I felt for a while like there's a, a void out here, you know, for a platform for hip hop that's authentic and that's comprehensive, you know, that covers a wide range of subject matter, not just music or not just fashion, but, you know, the whole, you know, gamut from, you know, sports to uh, politics and social justice to health to travel, business, you know, food, you know, all of that, anything under the sun, you know, but from a hip hop perspective and brought to you by people from the hip hop culture in, a, in an authentic way. So um, I think uh, Breakbeat, can really, you know, do a lot to uh, grow and to help hip hop, you know, grow even further, um, you know, than, than it already has. Got you. So like with Breakbeat, break would it be like a, a app that we download to get Breakbeat? Where, where would we be able to find it and when will it be launched officially? Sure. Well, well we just launched uh, about a week ago. Oh, got you. Okay. okay. So the, the where you find us right now, uh, our website is breakbeatmedia.com and you can go there just to kind of get a look at everything that we got going on and there are links to view or to listen to the podcast but uh you can watch them on our youtube we have breakbeat media youtube channel um and then we're on all the uh podcast apps so apple spotify anywhere you listen to podcasts gotcha. you can uh, find our podcast so far we've just launched uh the first two um the first one is don't call me white girl okay. um you guys probably you know if you don't know who that is you probably know of her through some of the things she's done. For for example, uh, the whole Why You Being Weird to Me this last few weeks, if gotcha. you know about that, that's yep. her. That came from a live, Instagram Live. You know, she was just cutting up one night and man, went super viral and people have been remaking it and make it into memes and songs. And if you ever watched the um, Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast with Gillian Wallow, they had her on last year for a couple of months as a guest host. Got you. Um, She's super funny, light skinned black woman from from Philly, uh, incredibly funny, but also incredibly smart. You know, she's not just, you know, talking bullshit. She talks about real stuff. And um, I think she's going to be a superstar. I kind of call her and one of my other new podcasts kind of like the unsigned hype of Breakbeat. If for gotcha. those of y'all that know what unsigned hype is, you know, this is somebody, you know, an emerging talent that I think is going to get get huge. Um, the other one that we launched is called Culturati. Culturati is uh, produced and hosted by um, a black woman named Kierna Mayo. And okay. Kierna is one of, one of the most uh, acclaimed 
journalist, uh, female hip hop journalist ever. She's been uh, doing it for a long time. She actually started at The Source, uh, working with me way back in the early years of The Source. And she went on and she uh, co-founded Honey Magazine. So a lot of you guys will remember, um, you know, really, really dope magazine in the late 90s that came out. Um, she went on and worked at a bunch of, you know, major magazine companies and was the editor in chief of Ebony. Um, and she's just someone who has a really, really, you know, interesting perspective on, on the culture and the community. Um, you know, obviously like a, a kind of hip hop feminist kind of point of view. Got you. Uh, but she's doing uh, conversations with Kieran Mayo, Culturati, and it's just, it's culture, it's society, it's kind of everything, just different guests and just really in interesting different com conversations. The new one uh, coming out this week is uh, she sat down with W. Kamau Bell, okay. um, who, who I really like from CNN. Super dope. Yeah, yeah. So, and she has a bunch of people lined up. So that's the second one uh, that's out now. You can find that on the podcast uh, apps. And after that, later this month, uh, we're dropping the Funny Marco show. It's called- Oh, um, man, I, yeah. I ride with Funny Marco. That yeah, was, I was going to say, most of y'all probably follow him already on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, he's been, you know, giving us laughs for the last few years, cutting up, cutting up. But, you know, I just think he has like a special comedic sense that's different and unique. And I think, you know, we can bring him into the podcast space and do something really, really, you know, creative and, and special. I think people are going to like that. So- uh, we're filming that out of Atlanta with him. That'll start dropping every week at the end of the month. And that'll be on YouTube and the podcast apps. And then and then my podcast is coming to Dave May's show. Um, you know, so this will really be the first time, you know, for me to sit down, have, you know, really interesting conversations gotcha. with different icons from the from the <clears throat> culture, um, different subject matters, different types of people. Uh, but just to, to get my perspective out there, I've always been like more of a behind the scenes type of person for anybody that knows my history, you know, with the source. I was, you know, the one driving the ship, you know, running it, but I was behind the scenes. I didn't really put myself out, you know, uh, out there on the front. I didn't want right. all the attention. I didn't want to be on the front of the magazine, stuff like that. I just was trying to, you know, get the work done. But um, now, you know, we're in a different world where, you know, it's, it's all about you. Your, your status on social media yeah, and is. people need to know, you know, not only my history and, and what I've done in the culture, but also, you know, just hear my perspective on things. So I think people will will find that really interesting as well. So, um, you know, then uh, beyond those, um, we got, oh, oh, I don't want to forget my boy Trapping Anonymous. Uh, that podcast is incredible. Okay. Um, Trapping Anonymous is a podcast where... Um, the host uh, interviews people anonymously, so their face and their voice is distorted. Um, and, you know, he interviews all kind of different folks and they just tell some of the most interesting stories wow. about their professions, whether it's a, a plastic surgeon, whether it's a stripper, whether it's a drug dealer, uh, a preacher. Um, you know, he's got so many different types of people, but they just open up and, and the stories you hear are amazing. And he's just a really great uh, interviewer and really makes them comfortable and gets into some, you know, some real stuff with them. Like people, people are going to like Trapping Anonymous a lot. So that's that's dropping also uh, towards the end of October. Um, and then we're going to announce the, the first two of our documentary series that we're doing. OK. Um, you know, so uh, one of those is is the story of the unsigned hype column in the Source magazine. Classic. Yeah, that is the column where we reviewed an unsigned rapper's demo tape every month. And through that column, we discovered Biggie. We discovered Mob Deep, DMX, Common, Eminem, Capone Noriega, uh, David Banner, uh, Jay Electronica. list goes on of some of the biggest names in hip hop who got their starts through the unsigned hype column. So we're going to tell the whole story. How did that column come about? All the people that worked on it. How do we find these you know, pick these artists. How do we get Biggie signed and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be really, really interesting uh, podcast. So that's going to we're in the middle of producing that now. And uh, we'll probably drop that also in the first part of the new year, along with the other one, um, which is uh, the Larry Hoover story. Gotcha. Uh, Ten part uh, docuseries, his life story. You know, he his story is incredible. Um, 
most people only know of him in a very kind of narrow way. He's just kind of always on, you know, like the the crime shows, the big time, you know, right. gangster, disciples, founder, and, you know, locked away in the supermax, you know, uh, et cetera. But his story is so much more than that. I mean, he has had such an impact, um, you know, on the lives of, of, of literally thousands of young men and women who changed their lives around, you know, when he uh, kind of went through the transformation with Gangster Disciples in the in the 80s and the 90s and, and redefined it as growth and development, um, got into politics uh, and was doing, you know, some really incredible things here in Chicago, Illinois, politically, you know, became a real force with the 21st Century Vote organization that they created. And he was due up for parole. You know, he was going to get out. He had been in jail, you know, since 1972, 1973 uh, in state prison here in Illinois. And he built up the whole Gangsta Disciples from prison and then began to transform it while he was in prison. And he was due to get out in the early 90s. And I think, you know, once once the powers that be saw, you know, that he turned political and he was registering thousands of voters and having 10,000, you know, young people come down to City Hall here and uh, march and protest. And I think they realized, like, you know, we got to get this guy out of here. You know, uh, it's one thing if he's running, you know, a criminal organization selling drugs and, you know, stuff in the black community. But, you know, once you start getting political and try to bring about change um, and you become a threat, uh, like a lot of our other, you know, political leaders historically uh, sure. that have, you know, been eliminated. Um, so I think, you know, he was set up to be put away in the supermax. He's been there now 25 years, you know, 23 and one, uh, 23 hours a day lockup. Uh, you know, very little time to talk to his family or even see his family. Uh, he deserves to be out. Um, and I think he could have an impact, you know, on things out here. Um, and when you learn about his story, you'll also learn more about the situation in Chicago today with the gun violence and why it is the way it is right. because of certain things that were done here, you know, historically uh, in the city. Um, you know, we'll get into the, a lot of the uh, issues with the criminal justice system, reforms that are going on, because, you know, his story involves all of that. So I think it's going to be a super, super interesting story. And we're talking to people that have never spoken before uh, to any, you know, media outlet, anything, um, you know, with him and the family participating for the first time, you know, that's given us an incredible access. So I'm, I'm really, really excited to, to get that one out there to the, to the world. I think, I think that one's going to be for sure. That's going to be dope. Super dope.